All right, everybody. It's Danny from the Stop. I'm back. We have a man who needs maybe maybe some introduction. I need introduction. No one knows who the. F- yeah, yeah, exactly. I yeah. hate when people do that. Man who needs yeah. no introduction. <laughs> everybody needs introduction in the age of the internet. So we got Julian, one of the most hated members of the Rory and Mallverse. Let's be honest. Well, that's not fair. Right. There's like four of us, so yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, it's just, it's, 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 yeah. I'll take it. So I think it's you and then Demaris. I think people hate Demaris because they hate women. Yeah, um, and I think that's pretty evident in a lot of comments. We were having a conversation recently where like a lot of guys will comment. Uh, I've been off Reddit, but previously on Reddit and on YouTube and et cetera, where um, like, damn, she's yelling. Why is she so loud? And it's like in a conversation where let's say her myself and maul are yelling but they'll only single her out and i'm like you gotta stop it because she you know is sensitive to certain things i'm like you gotta mm. stop focusing on this shit. Mm. so yeah anyway well, yeah i'll like take you, it most hated i like how you said you've been off reddit like it was some type of drug um so oh well, you know my addictive personality we're gonna do a sign so i gotta put my shades on sign shades this is like emulating of zach galifianakis you're gonna do a whole act yeah there yeah. we go. I have a proposition for Between you. Between two fake ferns. <laughs> yeah. I have a proposition for you, Julian. Is this J. Cole CDs? <laughs> no. You have two albums you can okay. pick from. J. Cole's Cole World, his freshman debut, or Akon Convicted. Make a choice. That's uh, Cole. Okay. The neither of them even... have the CD in them. So I don't even remember the, the track list to Convicted like that. I feel like Convicted was a bigger album, way bigger. Maybe commercially. I mean, this yeah. was like pop music, really, if you look at... Yeah, that one, I would say, would sell. Probably, but per, I mean, if you're asking me personally, I listened to this... Oh, you still do? Okay. W- well, at the time, more and certainly now, I think it was a freshman in college when this came out. So this was like, you know, he's in the varsity jacket, he's talking about school. I'm like, maybe I'm, you know, this is my life. So, you know, every kid puts themselves You're in such that. a, like, textbook J. Cole fan. Oh, right. for, oh yeah. huh, I, was, I am. I don't say I was. I'm such this a nerd. Is my life is hilarious. Yeah, he's talking smart shit. I was like, damn, he talked about Othello. I love Othello. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I'm a nerd. If you have it, you can take the J. Cole. I can album. take it? Yeah, you can take it. There's no CD in there. Oh, right? I'll, I mean, that'll go somewhere. Funny, Rory chose Thank Me Later. You choose J. Cole. In the what, what, what were his options? It was the Dream Love King three or his third album or thank me later oh thank me later yeah so i don't know disrespect to akon he's a legend he's he a man at the time he's, he's done... probably way bigger than oh, Jay Cole. ever than jay Cole. yeah <laughs> i think yeah. but he's also done a shit ton like for uh, in africa so like you know he's the reason why we have electricity in the studio okay shout out to that yeah. shout out to that i hope he gets real plants here as well all right you know what's funny is mandy went on an instagram live and said i'm not welcome here and then you paid for a space. Yeah. Isn't it funny how money works? <laughs> yeah. Danny, how much you say? You want to book it for two hours, two days in a row? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah we exactly. can make it work. That was my exact thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> you need bookings, right? Well, I don't think she needs it, but I think like you like it. You like when yeah, people Of course. Work, when yeah. you have a business, you want people to support that business, no matter how they feel about you personally. Goes to show you a lot of this back and forth be fake. Oh, yeah. And yeah. for the record, because I think that kind of Applies lends that. itself to where we're going with this. I don't have any animosity or hate towards you, you at all. You can't say that. You got to act like you're upset. Like, I don't. It took a lot like, to set this up. You yeah. love, don't you love when the interviews be like, yo, it took a lot to set this up? Bro, the, the funny <laughs> thing about it is like, and there was only like 50 people on it. This all came about Sunday night. Yeah. And we were on Twitter spaces, mm-hmm. which was for Rory. I jumped in at the end. And um, when Rory left, the questions were starting to come at me. And then, you know, Rory had mentioned to me, I was with him Saturday. He was mm-hmm. like, yo, I'm going to be doing Danny's uh, uh, sit down with Danny tomorrow. You want to come? And I was like, I would, but I had I was with a girl. And I was like, we're going to probably sleep in. And it's mm-hmm. going to be like 65 out. We're going to be outside. So Got just it. let me know how it goes. Told me, said it went great. And then when, you know, I was like, hey, if you want to have me on, let's set it up. Took, what, two seconds? Yeah. You DM me. I was like, sure. Like there was no like cat and mouse shit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, bet. Let me know. <laughs> like, I gotta, I gotta check you. Nah, I gotta. <laughs> I, I really appreciate what Rory did for me because I feel like now more people are opening up to like sitting down with me. And, yeah. Like, there's people like want to interview with me now. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. But you were like very forthcoming and like I'll sit down with and Adam as well for um. Having that was dope, me. man. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Yeah, that's sick. Are you gonna do a uh, uh, what's the gang bang one next plug talk? No, I thought you were gonna say like. 
banging like games. No, no, no. <laughs> no. So I'm never going to go on community no, no. just because I'm scared of like people thinking I'm down and I'm not down. I'm the farthest thing from down. You know? Yeah. But no, I am interesting in interviewing you because I told this to Rory. It's like you guys have your own lore now, absent of the Joe Budden podcast. Well, ab- lore. 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 Oh, lore. Okay. Where I think people thought I was going to. If I ever sat down with Rory, it's going to be more Joe questions. It's like, no, you guys have your own crap. <laughs> you guys have your own people who've been fired from the show, people who've been let go from the show, people who have antagonized audiences. And I think all of you have a great story to tell. So we're here to see if you're open to it. I go away, all man. Right. Fire away. How did you join Rory and Maul? How did that happen? Uh, do you want like? The, are you asking me how I met them or how did how I join on the Rory show? And Maul? Oh yeah, so the show. The sh- oh well, the show. Well, that skips a few years then. <laughs> well, when everything happened uh, with the fallout, I was at Atlantic Records still doing digital marketing, mm-hmm. um, and uh, Rory hit me and was like, "Hey, we're fast tracking this, you know, process to to sign a deal. Um, we need to build a team." And I, you know, similarly was doing. He wanted to hit me initially just to do the social media mm-hmm. and kind of launch it from like a give give them like a digital presence. I was like, of course, no problem, because that's what I was doing for Duce Palooza okay. oh, for two wow. years. Um, so I was like, yeah, sure, like you know, just give me the logins and I'll I'll take care of the rest. So that's kind of what happened. And then uh, a few months after that, Roy was um, wanted to have a more serious conversation about me coming on as a producer. Nice. And then um, at that time, I had already left Atlantic, and then I was like, okay, sure, like I'll start showing up to recordings because at that time i wasn't really good i didn't need to be there i would just get the assets maybe tweak some minor things nothing serious just doing what i was asked to do paid to do mm-hmm. and then um the uh producer thing about a week or two of that it became uh well, why don't you just get on the mic for patreon so i wanted to come on i never wanted to be on camera initially uh do one episode a week mm-hmm. it's behind a paywall i know how i speak i'm not the most you know like uh this era's you know vernacular yeah so i was like just throw me on a paywall i'll I'll, I'll freely say what i want and then like a week of that it was like well you just need to be because this there's too much like Mm. if you know if you're on the patreon then it's like what are we doing here we either have this unit together or or whatever there wasn't like an this or that it was just like it makes sense for you to do this are you comfortable it wasn't like do this or or it's over kind of thing it was like do you want to do this i was like you know what sure and then I, that was um, September 2021. No, not one. Jesus, I can't. Two, two, two three, whatever it was. The first year. Okay. So then from there, it's just, yeah. Was there pushback, not from the audience, from maybe some people who were just concerned about your presence on the show? It felt like you and the Maris got off in, like, to a rocky start. That's how I am. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, I don't think that's any yeah. surprise to anyone. I think... Um, also, like I'm well aware, you fell in love with these guys mm-hmm. uh, from the previous show, and then yeah. now you're learning about other people that you weren't aware of um, on this new show, on this new imprint of whatever this is. And then you know you you listen to these same people's voices for almost a year at that time, and then there's a new person. It's like, well, why is this new person mm-hmm. there? It, people have routines, they have things that they like. Why would we throw a wrench into the mix of something we've already grown accustomed to? It already took us months to get used to those other people. Who's this new guy? And not only that, he's boisterous, he's argumentative, and he's gay. So, like, it's all this shit that people hate. So, uh, so uh, yeah, and then, you know, I think internally. You're not gay, by the way. You're just, no, I just, don't, I just don't. Hip-hop is so fucking. It's a fair. Hip-hop is gay as shit. Like okay. we can say it. Like the, I just think it's weird that people no, are like I get it. I just extremely to homophobic. That, people will clip that. No, like, oh, I wish I would. I would take this shit to the next level. Uh, that'd be fire. Um, right. No, but uh, D- Damaris and I, and we've it's on. It's honestly crazy. We recently hashed this out uh, more so. I think following the events that happened with us on mm. our side, it, Damaris and I really had that time to like because. Yeah, I mean, to be frank, the transition, it wasn't handled. It was it was mismanaged entirely. There was no conversation between Damaris and I. There was no, you know, sit down or, like, change of power or, like, you know, here's the new structure, here's how it's going to... It was just like, here's Julian, he's in your chair now. So that's it. So there was a it. change of something? Well, like, they there? said it to themselves, but there was never, you know, if someone's joining a company, you should properly 
introduce them and explain to everyone what their role is. And, and even more so, if someone's retroactively taking someone else's spot, you should probably communicate to the person who is, you know, not losing their job, but, you know, their job's being altered. You yeah. should have a conversation. Even if I'm not there, I just feel like, and Damaris openly spoke to me, but we're very open about it now, and I love Damaris. We're, you know, as close, yeah. work wife, I get the whole thing now. And I, and I love Damaris, and I think we've moved past it in, in a very healthy way. But for the longest, we realized we weren't mad at each other. We were mad at how a situation was handled. Okay. You know, so... And then I was, you know, by way of like I was latching onto other people on the team that were supportive and like kind of aligned with like the vision or whatever I was trying to work on, which in turn at that time was isolating Damaris. And she felt like, you know, why am I here? Why are Which is completely warranted. But you know, I think now where we're at, we're we're good. So you're the producer of the Rory and Maul podcast. And I assume that Maris was the producer that before you, and then yeah, maybe she became it, 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 other things. It, it, now it's like I'm executive producer. She's associate producer, among other things. We both wear many hats. Um, Damaris does a lot of stuff uh, on the back end um, with the uh, like the uploading and communicating to the uh, company and all that stuff. And then I also do, you know, the, the social media. I write a lot of the, the sketches, the, the skits. The You write the skits, wow. Rory and I do a lot of that but together. But you actively help write the skits. That's we, a big we, Yeah, we, Rory brought on a couple writers uh, mm -hmm. for a few months, mm -hmm. and they were they were great. They would do, like, big picture uh, concepts, mm -hmm. and then Rory and I would go to the studio with them and then comb over the scripts and, mm -hmm. you know, punch stuff up, make it personable to each other, like what, what joke fits better for... Maul versus Rory versus me versus whomever. So it was just a kind of like, you know, that helped a lot. Because before that, it was really just mm. if I had a good dream or something, I'm like, oh, let's shoot <laughs> this. Dream. Seriously, though, that's how, like, the Gogurt yeah. one came about. Okay. I was in the uh, – I don't know where I was. I don't know. So it just came to me one morning or something, and I was like, oh, this would be funny to watch Maul, like, slurp a Gogurt or some mm -hmm. shit like that. The backpack thing with Office Space, like, that yeah, was like – That was a classic. Yeah, yeah just, like, shit like that. It's just, like, me – having the ability to like not dream it anymore but also like have the equipment and team to execute so it's really fun to kind of see some things through and then not only that see them succeed it's just like that to me is like the most fun part yeah and i feel like this kind of gets to my next question what your music right you're from the music industry yeah what is your motive behind even wanting to join rory and Maul? Um, I mean, like I, I learned, I work best with people that I respect mm -hmm. and like people that I'm like friends first with, because nice. that, at, you know, at a label force not be, might not be the right word, but you're, you're tasked to work with artists and teams and managers and project managers that you may not be cool with. Mm -hmm. And I would have this ha habit of, I guess, prioritizing those that I was friends with. So like uh, a certain artist manager and I, Corday's manager and I got very close. Nice. So when is like us, you know, working the album to us, just like every time he's in New York, we'd hang out. Every time I was in LA, we'd hang out. And it became like, and, you know, and I'm seeing these relationships just make for better work relationships, which also got me closer with, you know, Corday during the album cycle and just like moments mm -hmm. like that. Whereas I would have other artists on my roster and I was like, I don't want to, we got a fucking single this week. Like, I don't want to put this out. Like it was like a lot of, that and I know that's not and healthy because yeah. I think in school I had the same approach. If I loved a subject, I was all in on it. But if I hated a subject, I would be like, I want to leave the classroom and check out because I'm not interested, which is like very childish. It's not a responsible approach. But um, when yeah, when the things happened with with Rory, Maul, I was like, oh, like I I didn't know Maul as much personally, but I was like, I know Rory enough, and I like Rory at that, that uh, Rory and I at that time were becoming friends, and I was like, I trust his character enough in the team that he has that I met through Duce Palooza. So like some of the people were involved as well. I'm like, oh, these are people that I already know and care about. Yeah. And I was fascinated by the whole situation. I was like, this is insane what's what's going on. So to be a part of this in some capacity would be cool. So, awesome. Yeah. I I think one thing I was trying to explore with a lot of podcasters that I sit down with and talk to is this idea of things will end, right? No show lasts forever. So there's maybe a, an ability by everybody to kind of forecast how things will end. Mm -hmm. Do you see how Rory and Maul will end? Do you kind of even think about that? Um, yeah, of course. I, but I think they've uh, they've expressed multiple times, you know, the how the how long they've been doing this, almost ten years, mm -hmm. and you know the fatigue that comes with that. Yeah. The 
you know, I, I think at times, it, I think things kind of run its course, not because of lack of success, but just because of, uh, you know, maybe you're not challenging yourself the way you want or you want to evolve into another field. Like, I was on cruise control at Atlantic. I had a good thing going, but almost three years in, which wasn't that long in retrospect. But at the time, I was like, I'm not being challenged. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that I actively, you know, I cared about my job, but it wasn't stimulating me in a way where I was like all in on it. No. So I, I can understand for people that have been doing this for almost 10 years, like how like how many conversations can you flip about Drake? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, and that's why I think when I started doing more of the producer stuff, like introducing more general topics, like, you know, uh, like a la outside of hip hop, just, you know, thing that's things that are just happening, uh, you know, just in the globally or just other parts of the timeline, you know, because I feel like all of our timelines are so synced on like yeah. hip hop, but it's such a small a big world. fraction of what's actually going on in the world. And then voicemails are more fun because I think that neutralizes the uh, expertise Mm. You know, no, no, Rory, myself, Maul, or Damaris are more experts on, you know, some guy that you know caught his girlfriend cheating. Like, you know what I mean? So everyone, like, everyone's yeah. comfortable to speak. Yeah. So I think that was like a, a fun part in terms of like getting everybody comfortable to just freely speak without. There was like that weird like hierarchy of who can say what and when. But okay. when voicemails come around, it was like a free for all, and it was like yeah. this is the kind of energy that I. I like, yeah. 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 This is kind of interesting because I feel like, do you feel like you're blackballed because of your attention in any way, in any aspect <laughs> of your life, because of your attachment to Rory and Maul? Because the industry is kind of clickish. I haven't experienced anything okay. like that firsthand, no. Oh, okay. No. But I know Rory felt like there was instances where maybe a look might have been denied because of... Are you referring to Complex? The complex, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's expressed that. Like, look, sure, that's probably true uh or maybe true i don't know but i no personally i have i'm sure since i've been on the show people have looked at me in a different light whether it be positive or negative who's to say i don't know i'm not going around asking people how they feel about rory and Maul. like just if you know me you know me yeah. and if you don't then yeah i'm sure you're you know probably forming an opinion based on the people that i'm with but i fucking hate trump i want to put that out there you like do. i know maul loves that guy i don't he's a Really idiot. genuine love for Maul? Like, like, is, does he really rock? Yeah, with he fucks a Trump. But you're not. This is not. No, a, I'm not a joking. WWE like, he likes Trump. No, no, okay. no, no. That would be fun. Yeah, because I, I yeah. thought it was. You know, me kind of thinking. I didn't know. So you've had maybe conversations about this outside of the podcast where he's. Uh, yeah, off mic. I think. <laughs> yeah, sure. I also don't like not trying to get too political with Maul because of how like off how much i disagree with that but yeah. you know it is what it is i don't give a shit all right he also doesn't vote so that's <laughs> you know what i mean like okay i mean i f i feel like maul's attachment to the right is interesting because i feel like i've always met the older <coughs> og from the hood who likes the right <laughs> like, I've, I've, yeah i think <laughs> there's like a misconception that if you're black you yeah. should vote liberal yeah which i think is grossly uh inaccurate i think historically i think a lot of black people are conservative but mm. i think more so from the religious leaning and social standpoints yeah. rather than the uh the more like you know white woman this matters to me mm. stuff yeah. you know people are like you're a minority you should be a democrat i don't think that's true i think most mm. people that are black that are conservative are for different reasons not because you know Karen saw an unarmed black kid get shot. Yeah. I don't think that's why black people vote Democrat. Yeah. So, I don't know. Huh. I feel like you tapped into a little bit earlier. The idea of why my channel started was to reflect the workplace dynamics that exist in workplaces that are happening in front of our eyes. So, like, everybody knows you, Joe, Rory, Maul, and I can talk about it. Sure. So, I'm going to talk about it now with you. <laughs> Yo, before you get into here, because I know I'm sure you have a whole thing, your whole, like, your ability to, and I'm saying this is a compliment, your ability to find the truth in a in a storyline or a narrative, <laughs> and, like, because a lot of times when I, uh, Rory will send me a video or, or I'll catch something on YouTube because you're in my algorithms, yeah. and I'll see you make a point 
and mostly about us because I know, and you know, obviously I'm living it, so I can see if it's you know if you're on the nose or not, and you'll and you'll hit a point direct. Yeah. And then when you stop the analysis and do your like the last five minutes of the video yeah. like psychoanalyst deep dive thing, <laughs> and you just like you found the, the the thread and then you pull that bitch until it's like oh now we're way outside of like and you're like anyway we'll see how that goes tune in next time I'm like wait a minute no you had us here and now you ended up on like the other so side. yeah so I think that's smart of you though to like why not take something and I think other podcasters honestly Joe in particular do a good job of like finding a sliver of truth and then like doing that long I'm not like not con isn't the right word, but like manipulative web that it's like this is way more than it is Thought process. Yeah, like, it's just okay. like it's like a stream of consciousness that leads people to think that there's so much more <laughs> than the point you made Which was true. Yeah, but all the other shit is like that's not why okay. you found the truth But leave out the you the know derivative. Yeah, all right. Yeah Well, I think you know what's funny is people say that I just be making stuff up But I truly in my heart of hearts believe what I'm saying even when I'm saying it like I think Imani, who I'm going to interview soon, is someone who says that. But it's called the narrative now. Narrative has to die. But I think that's like, good, yeah, storytelling. Uh, good storytelling, journalism. You know, you're not, I don't think you're not harming anyone. Like, this <laughs> yeah. isn't, you know what I mean? Like, this is, it's, I think you've found an interesting lane. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. No, I know no. you had a No, it's totally fine. It's point. totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, I, I think we have to talk about the workplace dynamics, man. You got through this. You got through something. Uh, I did. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel that situation with Eden was handled? Uh, I think the guys, uh, I mean, ultimately, it's it's their show. Okay. It's their decision to make. So I think that they, you know, made the decision they needed to make. We okay. When we say we don't have an HR, we really don't. Okay. Like, that's not a joke. And I know Rory spent most of that break communicating with friends and people that he knows that work more in the HR environment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was kind of consulting with them. So... It's interesting because I feel like a kinship with you in terms of maybe us operating in a space where we feel like we have to be masculine. <laughs> and, like, the idea is, like, yo, you should have swung back. And I'm, like, I don't think I would have done that either. Like, I'm just such a non-confrontational, violent guy. But one thing I would say is, did Eden look burnt out towards the end? Because he, he kind of came off as the guy who was burnt out with the whole working situation. I mean, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to speak on, you know. You're his co-worker. Yeah, but I don't want to speak on his like mental state from the show or his like extracurricular. Act. I don't know. Okay. I, I can speak for myself. I mean, at the end of the year, if you if you look at what we were coming off of, you know, multiple mm -hmm. shows, an international show, uh, cramming banking episodes before holiday, like yeah. that that is ex it's exhausting. Like I, you know, speak for myself. I'm sure that in Rory and Mall, actually, I know our whole team, Damaris as well. We were all tired. We were all ready to to go home. So to have that. You know, incident happened, and then you know, not being able to really relax over the break yeah. it sucked. But like, yes, I think cumulatively we were all like, "Fuck, this is like," you know, we always look f prepare for that October run. Generally, is when we kind of fire up the shows yeah. and carry those through the holiday. It's it's a pretty exhausting, you know, two month run. Because I just felt like his reaction to it was like, "I'm done. Like it's fine. It's okay." And I, the way I observed it as someone who is a conscious observer of the podcast, it felt like me at work and not caring if I get fired. <laughs> it, uh, maybe. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Again, I don't want to speak for But, I, I mean, I no. guess Eden is also, he's not, he's not dumb by any means. So I think he's, like, acutely aware of, you know, the reaction consequences have, you know, reactions. I think that moment of uh, reality may have set in. And I think he, you know, had that internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. How do you think of work? Because there was this kind of idea that this should be handled differently because it's a workplace. But then again, it's a workplace playing out in front of the camera. So it's like, how do you really handle that behind closed doors when we see you every week? And it's hard to handle that. Again, I don't like not not my company, not, not my decision to pay. Okay. Yeah, it's like this. You know, they we also you know with respect to. The guys and Ed and we all agreed we wouldn't, you know, focus a lot of energy and and talk about this. So yeah. sorry to ruin your no, no, no. Why do people hate juicy you, scoop? Nah, nah, what I a really, pivot! I, 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 no, what I, a pivot! You're not giving me my answer. Why do people fucking hate you? Yeah, because I really am starting out joking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <You're> like, <laughs>
<laughs> They're not giving me the exclusive. I, I spent for this $330. Yeah. Nah, I'm joking. Um, I feel like you've been pretty, just to be honest, I don't want you to think I think you're, you've given me already a lot. <laughs> and I feel like Pause. that situation, <laughs> in the back, you gave me yeah. a lot. <laughs> nah, but yeah, yeah. But you've already been kind of honest. I feel like I'm getting from you like that's a sensitive subject. Well, I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, every, yes, obviously it's sensitive, but I we also again we we discussed uh, not only that, but behind closed doors, away from everybody, that we would not, you know, we would try to we would bury that situation and, and just move forward. Everyone's doing their their own thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone's continuing on with their careers and their lives, and that's you know, love so is life. life. Love and light. Yeah, but why do people hate you? That dude, I don't. People hate you. Like I can ask you the same thing, bro. Like you know what I mean. Well, I can. I feel like I can describe why people hate me. Sure, let's hear okay. it. Okay. So people hate me because I have somehow found access to all the pods that I ended up talking about. So there's a resentment there, and I'm also antagonizing <laughs> several, several different fan bases. So you got Joe Budden's fan base, who's freaking crazy. They are, they are active. And then don't discount the Rory and Maul fan base, who's also crazy in their own way. And podcast fan bases tend to be the most loyal. They think like they're part of the family. I was like that. So I'm not even judging. Like I used to really think I was like cool with people I was listening. But that's the way that y'all audiences are set up. So I think that's why. And also... I would assume I seem like a know-it-all to people who watch me, but I think I'm a nice guy. It's funny. The way you just described that last sentence is kind of think how I feel about myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm well aware of how I, I come off, but again, like you're when you step in front of a camera, congrats, by the way, on stepping in front yeah. of the camera this year. That's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, figured, I figured why not? Yeah, yeah, it's good for you. Good for you, man. I'm happy that you're, you're doing this. Um, <laughs> It's um, not like I came out the closet or something. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Gonna salute to you, uh, living but, your truth. All right, but uh, no, I think um, uh, it, it, it's. I think it's naive to think everyone's gonna like you, and no one likes everybody. And obviously, when it's someone that uh, you're you're listening to twice a week, three times if you're a Patreon member, mm -hmm. and then you know if you're in Twitter Spaces, the communities, whatever the case may be. The more you speak, the more you say, the more there is to to like, the more there is to criticize. Yeah. So it's it's very I think it's this is an extremely difficult space for people that are sensitive about their their public persona, persona and, 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 and ego looks, et cetera, because you're going to get scrutinized. It comes yeah. with the territory. Like I this year made it a point. I know I've said it. I already said it here. I've said it on the pod. Mm -hmm. Like I, removing myself from the Reddit community <laughs> was healthy for me. And I know it sounds like I know I'm like a jokey joke all the time. But like yeah. I'd kind of been prioritizing my. This sounds so and like gay and therapeutic. But like my peace. It's like why am I seeking out places that are inherently negative and looking for. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? It's like the girl going through her boyfriend's phone. Like, you're gonna find what you're looking for, <laughs> and now how are you gonna react? Yeah. You wanted to see, like, him de texting his ex, and now you found it. Now you what? See you don't now what? See. You're gonna be happy about him? Like, got him? No, you're gonna feel worse about yeah. yourself okay. and him. Yeah. So, like, if I'm just going out of my way to read comments about, like, how my parents were on Epstein's Island, like, what? Like, yeah, it's just like, what are we talking about here? So, it's like, there's things like that that I just, you know, you choose, you choose... It's like a game. Choose your adventure, and I'm choosing healthier spaces. There's so many places where I can, you know, talk, communicate, and speak with people that are a fan of the show. And if not, not a fan of the show. There's people mm -hmm. on Discord that say to me every time they talk to me, you know I don't like you. And I'm like, that's fine. We don't have to be kumbaya. Like, that's cool with me as long yeah. as we can talk. And it's not like, you know, just slowly death by a thousand cuts. Like, just don't come in here and kill me. Yeah, that's one thing I'm going through when I go to Joe Budden spaces, where it's like people feel like they can talk to me about my channel. It's like, I'm just here to chop it up. I'm not here to talk about my last video. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people yeah. that are jealous of you, because I think <laughs> most people... The Redditors are really... Cool. Well, because you think up. about it, there's a there's a barrier of entry, extreme barrier of entry to what, I, yeah. to what I'm doing. Yeah. And I know people, like, he's the regular dude. He's just there because he's friends with Rory. But to be friends and in the circle of these people are hurdles that my, most people can't go yeah. through so what you did and which is again what like i'm like i don't have a flight this fake plant i'll give you a fake plant as your flower what i give you a flower <laughs> what i give you your flowers for is you are like okay
and I am in this community. I am aware of everything going on by by way of listening and like creating all these narratives and looking into things. Yeah. Fuck it, I'll just create a community that can include all of these places that I'm mm. invested in and like freely speak about them. Yeah. And the thing with yours is anyone can do that. Exactly. And I'll say to all the people that criticize you, you're too pussy to do it. <laughs> you can do this. Like you, yo, if you had yeah. a legit YouTube. And we have enough of a rapport, even though, you know, in the past we may have exchanged some no. stupid words. <laughs> I at least respect you enough to you DM me. Hey, do you want to do this? Yeah. yeah. So it's, e it's not saying it's easy, but it takes the work and you did the work. So it definitely takes the work. And it is in some ways easy because I came from Reddit. Like I'm a Redditor turned YouTuber. And I told Rory this, like I, I saw my Reddit comments get upvoted and I was like, this is a metric. I can yeah. use this. And just to y'all, y'all can do it too. You just got to really stay consistent. And it's hard because remember, I wasn't monetized for a long time and you just got to do it. For How me. long did it take you to get monetized if you don't mind me asking? No, it's fine. Uh, six months. That's Dude, that's great. Yeah. That's and like I wasn't steady posting growth. every week. I yeah. Wasn't, yeah, I was going to quit multiple times. <laughs> I, I can give you advice as a, as a digital marketer and yeah. someone that handles our digital footprint for the pod. Like, I can give you advice on the YouTube social side of things if you want. I don't want to bore people no, on this, no, sure. but off air. Sure. Same like, for the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I'm fascinated, this wasn't even part of my question, is why does the Reddit hit podcasters so hard? I don't think it's in unique to podcasting. Um, I just think uh, it's funny. It's like what people say. Um, I'm trying to think of like... Uh, I, this is the analogy I use. So, like dating apps. Mm -hmm. So, like, take uh, and everyone knows I'm the dating app guy. Like, take like <laughs> uh, a Tinder versus a Hinge. Mm -hmm. When you think of Tinder, what do you think? Tinder swipe left or something. Well, like in comparison to Hinge, what's the? Let's see. Like comparatively, what do you think? If you're familiar it's with the Hinge. more popular one. But popular. Well, I guess like more like in a pro sex, like just yeah. swipe hook hookup culture, yeah, right? Yeah. Where at Hinge, you look at it and it's like. Bond. more yeah let me let me take this person seriously because i can see six photos and read their storyline <laughs> but it's like if you look at the just the uh the ai and the, the the app itself the the crux of the app is the same thing mm -hmm. you see someone you like them and then from there it's up to you the the yeah. two people that mutually agree that they like each other to go about how they want to go through so the way i look at reddit is there's so many communities with comments and, and forums and back and forths. Mm -hmm. Reddit is the Tinder in the sense that it's like none of these are uniquely different. Reddit is just the mean one of those. Yeah. So it's like I, I don't think, you know, people on Reddit, there's threads about every channel. You can talk about cats, people shitting on cats every day. Yeah, that's a fact. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter what it is. I just think inherently people see Reddit as the negative place to talk about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it also allows for, you can write, like, paragraph pages. Oh, yeah, pages you from. can get your shit off. <laughs> you <Yeah. can> really, <laughs> and then uh, the, 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 it just looks like it really, the No Jumper breakup, the Joe Budden yeah. podcast with Rory and Maul breakup, like, the Reddit be in your, on your cases, and it looks like it really has an impact. But... Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, yeah, we always, we joke. I think I honestly, personally, I think it gets too much. Like, I don't even want to give them this much sauce now. Cause I'm off that shit, but it's like, <laughs> I, I think, uh, it's, I think a thing that, that community is good at is they're consistently the most vocal mm -hmm. and they're mo not only that, but they're the most vocal and most opinionated informed in, in a negative. I don't say informed. You don't think they're informed. No, that some people. Yeah. But I think negativity it's a good equation, being vocal on a, multiple times a week, being negative, and being uh, loud. That's a formula for people pay attention to that shit. Okay. Now, just to pivot a bit, I've always wondered about, because, right, Rory and Maul sit down with Joe, who's the, a leader, right? His leadership style is confrontational and maybe divisive. But now Rory and Maul leave Joe, and now they're leaders. Mm -hmm. So how is Rory and Maul's leadership style? How can... They be 50-50, and, like, how do they control kind of what happens in the workplace? Are you in the workplace or are you talking about on the show? On the show. Workplace, um, they're kind of interchangeable. Well, me. I think, like, they uh, – I mean, you've seen – it's been, you know, two, two and a half years of this on, on our own. I think they generally are safer with their critiques. Like, not, like, you know, respect the industry relationship shit. But, like, I just think by nature, neither yeah. of them are, like, that, you know – like filled with that much like 
mm-hmm. visceral and like passion of hate that they just want to <laughs> spew at someone yeah. like just you know um but uh where i think they might lack in that department in some level with like critiquing artists i think we pick up in other things uh so I, I think it all like kind of you know that balances out in some regard. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's giving like Gen Z workplace where it's like I read this article the other day on the Times where there was like a Gen Z workplace and they're like they don't even know how to get a copy done because nobody knows how to take authority or nobody knows how to take the lead. Is that what? It's funny you say that. Rory took our copy machine yesterday out of the studio. Oh, he took it home? <laughs> yeah, he well, took it home. Okay, so that's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't have pens in there. Uh, wow. Why well, you just need a laptop? Probably. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, what, what did you mean by that? What, what are you alluding to, though? Sorry. So, what I'm alluding to is kind of how young workplaces, maybe your podcast seems to be startup culture, there's no like authority figure and people kind of just do what they want because people don't want to step on each other's toes. You can counteract that and you can say, nah, Danny, that's not how it is. I mean, I think we know what, I think we, we do what we're, I think everyone does, you know, we get, we, the show gets out. Like we do the show. Well, what the fans want, we deliver and, and consistently have been, Honestly, I've been very happy with the spree of the episodes that we've put out. On the run. Um, really yeah, good. I think I think like I, you know, I don't really big up the show in that regard ever. Like on my, but like I'm very happy with how these last few episodes have been. They've been over two hours, uh, great conversations, um, a lot of funny moments. Yeah. Uh, Patreon has been, you know, doing doing great uh, performance. Those episodes are also longer. They're they're more in depth. Like all that kind of shit. I think everything that a fan wants. We've been delivering on for a few a few months um, yeah. per se, um, but in terms of yeah, I think you know it's always tough when you're working with people that it's not just a work relationship, mm-hmm. it's it's friends, you know, like it's and I think and I've spoken to Roy before. I, I've suggested like you know maybe we find a third party uh, to just kind of be the person that doesn't know any of us as people and just looks at optically what is. Ram Media, and their job is to make this company, because it is a startup, make this company succeed. Not a friend, not a friend of a friend, not the guy we yeah. just got drinks with, or go to the show with, just a person you just blindly hire or just bring in to consult. So I, you know, I think, I personally think that would be a good move, but I just, I don't know, like I just think we're, we they've operated uh we've operated in such a familial space that we're always looking to lean on people that we trust and respect which is fair i mean if you have the ability for creating your own company you're like well i know this person can do this why wouldn't i empower them to do that thing yeah but then i think be, when you do stuff like that sometimes you overlook things or put on blinders because you respect them as a person and you know i know they're the families and the da 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 it's like <laughs> all that you know what i mean like it's just naturally it's you're going to yeah it's harder when you know the backstory yeah. So the Ram Media is like a real company. Uh, well, yeah, Rory and Mall Media. Ram with the Ram is the uh, abbreviated version. No, I like. That. Oh, I brought this for you. That's oh. that's you know, uh, Ram Radio. That's where we get the Ram Radio oh, from. That's the so that's best the... thing y'all got. Not, not that everything else is bad, but this Ram Radio. You gave me a content. CD. I'll give you that. That's oh, fine. yeah. No, I'll put it. I'll see if I can put it on my um, laptop. Thank you. Yeah, of science. course. <laughs> Ram <Radio. It's> science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. One thing I'm curious about is, like, because Rory and Mo aren't so vocal, people can just say, like, their podcast is trash. What do you mean by that, by not vocal? They put out, we put out uh, at least six hours of audio every week. What is not vocal about that? Well, they're not vocal about their success, right? So why people, should they be? Because people say like they're trash, they're garbage. They, they and what? So what? That, yeah. What is the reward? And I'm sorry for cutting. I'm just no, going to be. I'm, this is my time to spar. <laughs> what? What's the uh, upside of them addressing when when someone? So theoretically, if you really want to look at, take a step back. Everyone that's saying these things has a job. Yeah. I would assume some are probably unemployed, which would embolden the point I'm about to make. That would be like us going to you know the the Reddit community or whoever and be like. Why talking about our success? Show me the contract you signed with the current company you work for. I was more so talking about like just the idea that because I seen Joe do this where he put this picture up of all the monthly listeners, all of this, all of that. That's what I meant by being more mm. vocal. Like these are our successes. 
And people are allowed to kind of craft your narrative. And I think Ian Dunlop, when he sat down on the show, he's like, you got to address the narratives about you being a trash podcast, even though you're very successful. I mean, to your point, like all of those metrics are available to everybody publicly. It's not like we're hiding behind. It's not like the way in which Apple doesn't release their numbers because people know that they're significantly behind Spotify in terms of like downloads and streaming. So like, it's not like we're... There's our shit's in a lockbox and no one can have access to it. If you yeah. just look shit up, like, and then from there, form your own opinion. If it's not as if you, if it's charting not as high as you thought, make fun of it. If it's better than you expected, then you probably won't say anything because it'll probably annoy you that it's doing better than you thought it was. Yeah, that's definitely. Just but it's like I, I just don't see <laughs> yeah. the value of like us jumping in because you know there's weeks there's moments where you know we'll shoot to one because of some trending story that you know the chris brown thing i'm sure shot it but it's like why i think that's suffering from the same thing that we personally as as a podcast often critique artists for doing when your rollout is going number one in you know we talked about it with Khaled and tyler when your brand your identity is going number one and you don't what's your backup i think Things like saying how, because I assume you guys have high retention being that people really connect with y'all on a deep level. Like the people who rock with y'all, rock with y'all. So like, you know that. So why does it matter that if I if I put a stat out like we have an 80% retention, why does that matter? Because the casuals see that. Gives and- a fuck what the, like, I'm not saying it gives a fuck what they think. I'm just saying like, what does me, what is us going on the podcast and telling a fan, you know, guys, we have... People listen, people listen to our third ad longer than the others. Like, that doesn't ma- matter. <laughs> I, I think it does matter. Like, if, Why? If you put out these front-facing statistics, the narrative about you being a fledgling podcast probably goes away because you have all of this da- data. You have a one-sheet. Exactly what, what, what a homie did. He, you know, he put out these numbers. Maybe they're not the realest numbers. Maybe they're contrived. But they allow their marketing, their branding, you know, the show. But the people that need to know those things, like, you know, we our deal with the serious deal ended and we were, you know, looking around mm-hmm. talking about the, the people that need to see those things have access to those things because it, it, there, there's dollars involved and there's, you know, contracts involved. Yeah. I really, I'm like, not even on some like protect our ego and brand shit, on some like a genuinely curious, I don't understand why. I think that... I think in the same way in which rappers buy flashy chains and like car, like I think uh, there's a lot of tropes in hip hop that yeah. I think are stupid. Like I have a lot of my friends uh, mm-hmm. that I, I hold close in this space are quietly buying real estate and flipping homes nice. and growing wealth that way. You can't throw that on a chain. You're mm-hmm. also not going to share the deed to your home to the internet and nice. be like, look what I bought. Yeah. That's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, just go about your business, accumulate wealth, you go about your success quietly. Yeah. The richest people aren't going around in like, you know, gaudy chains and like just looking like an idiot. I think I think that's such an, like an old school hip hop trope that you need to wear your wealth or, or your the, success. This is the media business though. This what, bro, I talk in a mic for a living. You want me to have a chain on and share no. my numbers? Like that's so Oh, it's here. It's, it's, dude, this is a thirteen hundred dollar chain from David Yerman. Like I'm thinking I'm rich. about earn your leisure. <laughs> earn your leisure. The way they talk about their podcast—that's their brand. You're, I know what you're doing. <laughs> that's like, they're, that's no, their entire podcast is talking about value. Value. Yeah. That's their brand. But why can't y'all talk about? Because that's value. we're not. We, I don't. I don't even know what a fucking Bitcoin is, bro. Like, but you can talk about the state of podcasting. You can talk about the traction you've built in your audience. You can talk about how. You but it's all be, there. You yeah. can see it. You talk about how Merc go to Social Blade. It's like not, you guys scour these fucking social, sites. It's different when it comes from the source, man. Why does it matter if we <laughs> talk matters. about it, bro? It we matters. grew five thousand YouTube subscribers you in the last two months. How's are, that? You what you say? What'd you five thousand new YouTube subscribers in, in two three months. That's, How's that? Is that good? Great. Is that a Look, metric? You know what else that did? That you know what else that doesn't re- reveal dollars. None of this shit. Like it so, matters, but it's also not something that. Why does that? How does that affect a listener is kind of what I'm asking you. If you're already invested in the show and you care about the show, it affects the perception of the brand. And you guys were built, well, not built, but you guys, Rory and Maul, come from a big rock star brand like the Joe Budden podcast with Rory and Maul. And you have these big fan bases 
that are heavily <laughs> invested in seeing you guys positioned as garbage. Talking about Joe Budden's fan base, talking about academics fan base, and they can curate a reality sure. to make you seem like you are bozos who don't know what you're doing. Fine. And this brand stuff really matters. Look, keep talking. Keep you're, 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 you keep us in your mouth. We're still in your conversation. But like, that's because I care. No, not you. I'm yeah. saying like oh, the people that. Would, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean yeah. like the people that are on the. Okay, I got, the, I got person. I'm we're a, there b. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just saying like, it's it, it doesn't. I I don't know. Okay, Maybe yeah. I'm the wrong person to speak about that stuff with because I genuinely don't look into that side of things. Got it. Got it. I feel like you know what's funny is the person you mentioned that there would be. Like it would be good to have a person that doesn't know y'all as friends. Oh, I think that would be very beneficial. And, that, and I feel like this would be what the person who doesn't know you as friends would come in and say. Like, I would be sure. that per- Like, I would be the voice of that person. Not that I want to be that person. I'm just saying. But um, have there been any changes implemented since Eden left? Uh, Re- uh, Rel. Rel. Shout out to Rel. Shout what out to Rel. Um... Honest, I mean, yeah, I, I think when any time you're going through like a seismic change like that, it, it is an opportunity to reevaluate workflow uh, amongst people, amongst the team members. And again, we're a small team. So, you know, we all, again, I said it, we all wear many hats. So mm-hmm. things were kind of shifted around, um, things that make sense put here. People were taking, you know, we some of us took on some roles that, you know, he had, and, and and then we kind of had the opportunity to, like, sit down with Rel and really comb through things and tighten up, you know, deadlines, turnarounds, things of that nature. Um, so, like, in terms of, you know, obviously optically from the show-wise, I don't think anything's changed, but on the back end, I think have changed, things have changed. Uh, but I would argue things have gotten, if, if in terms of that way, for the better. Okay. Let's be honest. I, I'm going <laughs> to say it. You pointed this out. What? You pointed this out. You said Maul doesn't listen to the podcast. Oh, we keep that. why am I the, yeah, no shit. How do you feel about that? Why would he? He's, he's on it. He does it. I do from like a curious producer standpoint. I'm also like, you know, want to listen to the audio quality. So you apply to you. Hey, and then, well, I'm on also it. the producer. You could apply, hey, you're on it. You, you've lived it. Why do you need to go back and look at this? I'm, I'm telling you why I listened to it. I told you. I answered your question. <laughs> but why? The, but Maul's also the same reason that you listen. You probably could also Maul, could apply to Maul. Like he's, That's a question for him, dude. I'm not Maul. You seem perturbed. I'm not. You you're, seem, no, you're doing no, that narrative no, thing. No, <laughs> you're I'm saying, that. not in this very moment right now. I'm king. No, but I'm saying <laughs> no, in this very moment. <laughs> On the on the podcast, you noted how Maul didn't listen to the Julian Rory episode. Right? Oh well, that was a, not a joke because I know he probably didn't. But like yeah. that was like, uh, yeah, it was because we were. I was referring to something we had spoken about on that episode, and I was like, well, you didn't hear it anyway. Yeah, as if like, so what? I feel like deep down in places you want don't want to admit it probably is like. You would say like, "Want more? Listen to the show more." Uh, that honestly is not at all. I okay. when I when they're you know I think everyone has things that we can do to be to become better and improve, and that's the lowest on the totem pole. Okay, all right. We're still in the hot seat. There's some people saying, yeah, "Who's some people?" <laughs> some where where, a lot where are you pulling this from? You read one comment. I've scoured the internet <laughs> of things. So there's some people who Show say, <laughs> it's in right here. I can't put you in here. No, but there's some people who say the Patreon isn't sufficient enough. <laughs> well, I, just, I, I find that so funny. What Sorry. Would you say to, what did you say to those people? Dude, we... we uh, Why are you laughing? These are... Let, let me get into my... Uh, <laughs> Come on, Barbara Walters. All right, all right. Listen, there are people spending money on the Patreon and you laugh in their face, I'm not, Julian. No, see, now it's you're doing sick, that thing. It's disgusting. You have... How many subscribers you got? Enough. Okay. I was trying to fish. You got people <laughs> trying to watch your content. They want more Rory and Maul, but they don't feel like they're getting it. You're like the absentee There boyfriend. was that like weird, uh, <laughs> there was that weird um, thing about people saying like, we're not delivering, yeah. but nothing changed from our, it wasn't like we took like quietly, we're taking content away. Mm-hmm. Like we've been doing the same sk- release schedule for like two years now, so I, I honestly I don't know where that narrative or why that's a thing. What are, are you subscribed? I was yeah I was I subscribe on and off. I'm not gonna lie. That's go, fair. I no, I don't. I don't. I, I honestly understand that model. Like bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> like I save some fucking save whatever it is. So. I gotta be honest. Also, Joe's Patreon kind of got me used to people dropping almost every other day. 
So when I don't get that, I just quit and then come back. And it's not just y'all, it's flagrant, all of these people that yeah. are Patreons, I do that too. That's fair. And I, I think, you know, I think because of Joe's position in this in this marketplace, he set the standard, mm -hmm. which in turn more so in like, you know, I'd say more so hip hop podcasts, because I listen to a lot of podcasts, mostly comedy mm -hmm. podcasts. All of them, none of them are bi weekly. Facts. Every single one of them is once a week. One of them I like drops at like in 10 p.m. on Sunday. Like it's like the worst time to drop a podcast. But you know what I mean? Like, so I just come from like a, I think a more holistic sense of when you look at podcasting, what is an appropriate amount of output? I saw one podcast that I really like. You know, Nate Bergazzi at all? He's no. a big comedian. He hosted SNL uh, about a couple months ago. He did nice. three nights at Radio City. He's, very humble, like clean. He's a clean comic. Okay. His podcast episodes, and again, like he did SNL, doing these massive arena tours now, he, you know, is on the road a lot. And his uh, podcast, Nate Land, we're doing, before this massive, like, you know, superstardom thrust, he was doing two, two and a half hour episodes. They said, look, time crunch wise, we're scaling these bitches down to an hour. Mm. That lasted one week. And that was the first time I ever saw like a podcast not in our space, like try to switch up something of that to that size, like pretty much cut the show in half. And it's not a bi-weekly show. It's a once a week mm. show every Wednesday. And they got eviscerated and they talked about it on yeah. air. They're like, well, we can't, you know, they were like funny about it, making jokes about it. And they immediately went back to. So I think when it's, it's your conditioning, your audience. And I think yeah. because of the relationship not because, because of the relationship that, you know, Rory and Maul have with Joe, unfortunately, what he does, people still expect the same exactly. from us when we're not. This is a completely different show. It's a completely different company. We're setting our own rules and what's comfortable and what works for all of our schedules. But unfortunately, the byproduct of what we do is still in compared to someone that we don't have any, I don't have any relation to nor does our current show, but it does. it's not fair. People like, he puts out the however many X episodes on Patreon a week. Yeah. Good. I'd like, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I'm glad they can yeah. do that. We we don't, and we've never promised that we would do that. Mm. There's also that side of things. It's like people feel like they're being cheated. Okay. You can see what we're promising you in the description of each tier. We tell you. We're not, like, pump faking it. So if, you, if you're paying for what you're paying for, you're going to get what you're paying for. I have pushed back. Sure. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Patreon requests live. Some of the best content you did. I know the, you, yeah. you guys no, are going to do ahead, this go thing. Ahead. You guys are going to do this. Oh, the evolution of that is Ram Radio. But we loved that. We loved when you guys were playing the videos. It gave us that, you know, TRL, Total Request Live. I felt like I took a time machine with my friends back in the day. Yeah, and then it stops, and then I go on the Discord, which I was banned from. You bastards! Who banned you from Discord? That dude, the mod, these mods, man. Matt? Yeah, Matt. You and Matt, you and Matt would have been. No, but the thing is, because that's some is when I recorded Rory. And remember, you uh, remember you cursed me, remember you cursed me yeah, out? Yeah, that was, that was some bitch ass yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I told Rory. See, I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought I was bad. Like I, I did the crime. All did, right? you, did you and Rory talk about that? <laughs> yeah, we talked about it. I'll release that at some point. But it was okay. just I feel like my reasoning of why I did it was justified but I'm sure that I just seem like a narcissistic sicko but yeah and on the discord Rory was with you and Edin at the time this is like a while back and Damaris and he's like yeah I wanted to do more of those but it seemed like nobody wanted to do them like this seems like oh, the PRLs yeah this seemed like a disengaged strategy and that's why I was asking you about the workplace now PRL I mean yeah I, I think the it was, uh, yeah, like, they have scheduling, uh, a lot of, honestly, a lot of stuff with, with us internally, it's not so much whether or not we want to do stuff, it's just, it's, it's, you know, we're all, we're grown adults, so it's, it's a scheduling and, and things that, okay. you know, and, and, to, and to promise and deliver uh, with a frequency at which we like to do things, we really need to make it work. Um, and at the time, I think PRL was to subsidize the lack of content we were putting up on Patreon. Because mm -hmm. at that time, we were still figuring out what people wanted from Patreon. Okay. And I'll be you know, as, as blunt as possible. We were thinking that people would like uh, BTS, like vlogs, or like that kind people of content. Pods, yeah. People were like, we don't look cool. <laughs> Give us just you guys shooting the shit. Yeah. So when we figured out that formula, we were quickly pivoted to 
sick. Like if you look at literally look at our last Patreon drops, it's all just oh. episodes. You know, so I think once we figured that, that's great. Uh, yes, and then Ram Radio became a thing. And I think um, that l- was less of a creative lift. Yeah. Uh, like if you want to know the 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 strategy behind that, we have a group chat where you know we fire off the songs to create the playlist. They get sequenced. Um, they get you know just kind of blended together on uh, whatever software by Rail. Just kind of mix them yeah. together. Um, the commercials we we write we pre-write you know Roy and I have like a shared note and we'll just kind of like fire off topical things um and then they just you know we can either do it before we record an episode or after we record an episode uh you know this is commercial about this commercial about that that audio gets sent and then mixed together we can turn those out quick yeah so I, like lifting wise it is a little less uh heavy lifting but personally I yes PRL is dope I love PRL if there's a world in which for our schedules it makes sense, I would love to bring it back. I don't know when, if or when that would be, but it is something that we are very proud of and like would like to, I, I think we all thought it was dope. Yeah, well, we're getting into the weeds of PRL. <laughs> it feels like we're talking about something everybody knows about. But my favorite part, we're about to wrap up soon. Uh uh-huh. Beefs. Beef? Beef. You remember that DVD beef? Yeah, of yeah. course. On the streets of New York. Yeah, true life. All right, cool. Good impression. Okay. <laughs> Bing Rames. All right. You see my Rory socks? I wore these to support Rory. Did you pay for those? The, I thought it'd be different socks. Did you pay for those? Hell no. That's whack, bro. He's my guy. It's seating. This is seating. It's promo. See, if you had a business partner, he would tell you to pay for those. <laughs> if you had a business <laughs> like, that goes friendship and Yeah, this is seating. My so, guy, Baisley's on the foot. Oh, it's, I got to get those. I know. They're great. All right. We're going to talk about beefs, man. Why are you sending shots at Joe? What's up with you, man? Oh, my God. You did that. Dude. You can't I blame said me this on spaces. for being messy. No, it's, I mean, yeah, you're supposed to ask. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, I was, I, took a, I was on a bunch of shrooms, and I was laughing and hanging out with my friend. I, don't, I think people think I care way more than I do. Cause you know they're like it's it's you're in this thing you're in the circus you chose a side I didn't <laughs> choose a up. side like yeah, yeah. so I I don't know I just it was funny Roy and I may have been talking about it like I sent him a tweet that was a freestyle bar I think that he said from like some old freestyle yeah. and he was there was a comment yeah I was like oh like he's been getting mentioned a bunch in this we were just like kind of laughing about certain like just artists whatever that her names have been getting mentioned and I. I think I like said like, oh, I have this clip. This is just funny. And he was like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Didn't think anything of it. And then I was just like, I tweeted it. And they, oh, you know me, I'm not really on Twitter like that. <laughs> so like I just didn't go back to, I was also having a great time with my friends, took, taking the shrooms. And then like 48 hours later, I go to Twitter, my personal Twitter. Mm. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all these people are like, you fucking it. <laughs> I'm that. like, damn. Yeah. I'm like, that's cool. Thank you. Do yeah. you edit these? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm gonna make your job I'm more <laughs> difficult. Don't don't start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the heart drop that happens as a person that edits this is like so yeah, crazy. Mark that. What's the time stamp? Like, like you're slapping me. <laughs> but like, just more work. Like, it's like, please stop saying that word. <laughs> no, I'm just. Well, the please. Um, oh, please. No, I, I'm sure you have more of like a. Uh, I honestly want to know what you think because I think this will be fun to hear your uh... my, my thought process. Because didn't you make a video? About yeah, that? That <laughs> just mad did. funny. Stop, pro- like stop processing. Mind is yes, you don't not heavy on Twitter, but you are aware of what happens on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, that's where, stupid. Where an innocent tweet. Well, I don't think it was innocent because the video, the rap lyrics you highlight was about domestic violence and a rapper who has. A history of people leveraging domestic violence incidents onto him is a serious subject. So it was kind of like that was what I was thinking. Like you knew what was going on, even if you didn't. And I'm not even like no, I'm like yeah, aware. Yeah, yeah, obviously I'm aware. But um, <laughs> no, I I don't even want to speak on like the case or whatever that person. I think it's funny <laughs> what I learned and you we, don't speak on the cases. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I learned, what I learned, and what I thought was the funniest thing for me afterwards was um in uh looking at the comments and like me people you're saying those fans are like they're yeah. they're that's what they're, they're gonna say. big yeah. like they're not pause like but they're like they are vocal and they are angry and i was like damn like i'm the one getting attacked but like listen to the bar 
Yeah, like that's wild. like why wild. am I the bad guy? Like this like yo fuck you. Da, da, da. I'm like but like you're ignoring the <laughs> the actual, the actual thing that we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. So I you want me to like print the lyrics out next? Like I don't know. Are you prepared for that smoke that the Joe Budden audience can bring to you or Joe Budden himself? Like what if he goes on a rant? I don't You don't care. care. You can turn you can put your phone down. Yeah, like I'm dude, I have a very fulfilling life outside okay. of this. I don't I'll go somewhere. I'll take some shrooms and frolic in the park. <laughs> okay. Like I don't I don't you know, this doesn't consume my being. Okay. Is that a shot at me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's funny. That no, me? no, because this is, I think, what, I, again, I gave you your compliments on the, uh, the on the open. I think what you're doing I is, have is you know impressive. That I'm a part-time battle rapper. And that's Shut the big, f*** no, up. I'm not. I was about to say, put that shit behind the paywall. <laughs> I, I battle We got to do you, and, if you, that was the case, it'd be you and Damaris in the battle rap. I'll smoke Damaris. A little bit. And it will be like, you know what, you ever see King of the Dot? You actually rap? No, I don't. Could, I don't do want. Th- <laughs> I could if I had to for like a skit. If I had to, yeah. Like if it's like Danny from the Stop versus Damaris, it could go down. But um, you said you had another clip for Joe on the Twitter space. Oh well, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> there's, I there's this shit exists. Like I don't know, like it's, it's out there. I'm also not unearthing or revealing stuff that's not a <laughs> bro. These are songs. Like they're existing. Like I'm not doing. I'm not hacking a hard drive. <laughs> I have you know what I mean? Information that came out on a well-released album. Yeah, like bro, the album it probably went like gold or silver. Like people listen to it. Like okay. I'm not, I'm not doing shit that hasn't already been done. That was funny because I was listening um, to Focus. And he was like, "I'm a white beater. I don't mean the tank top." And it's like, <laughs> see, that was like the single. That there you go. <laughs> the sing- that was the Focus track. Yeah. 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 Like, that was a TikTok dance record. Yeah, yeah. We, need to do the, we need to do the science. All right, That's let me funny. move on. Let me move on. That's really funny. Imani seemed to respond to that tweet. I thought I was going to Oh, he on. did? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see what he said. He responded, and I think he put a gif of Will Smith. You know what he said? Keep my, my wife's name out your mouth. Wait, that's funny. Yeah. Wait, like, as in, like, if, it, in, if I'm wrong, what, if, in, in that scenario, Joe being his <laughs> wife, did yeah. he actually do that? Because that's funny i gotta need to pull up his twitter this might i might need to edit this out but let me pull it out pause <laughs> and, uh, luckily you can find the tweet on my page because i don't tweet much so nah, it's probably at the so top you really don't be on twitter i don't man. use twitter i remember imani was mad that i called y'all racially ambiguous and then i think he thought i was trying to say y'all were bi and i was not trying to say that that's but, funny yeah. to misconstrue racially ambiguous for bisexual <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah, like, he seemed like legitimately oh here we go let me see. All right, that's the tweet right there. Responding to you. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I, would re- I should retweet this. Well, would that, <laughs> I was going to say, would this become a... Viral. Yeah. Julian responds. Yeah, I was going to say, as <laughs> soon as I do later. that, I'm going to have you edit out my... Uh, my cursing and then make a video about th- I'm just gonna make you work all day. <laughs> That's funny. I this like that. Why I don't, also, hated. I don't know it, I don't know Ima- uh, Imani at all. Yeah. Um, but there was that one what did you did a video about us or something. He yeah. responded to No, you sat down with him. I didn't sit or down. Or something. Oh Twitter space. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. it was like two hours, right? It, really long it was long. <laughs> uh, like and is, yeah. I heard because someone clipped it, the thing that he addressed with me, and I, I really liked what he said. Yeah. I don't, again, I don't know, I don't know Joe, I don't know these guys, so you know what I mean. Like my opinion is pretty neutral. Got it. Um, I was gonna ask this because I find this an interesting thing to be like, where like street morals get applied to podcasting, and it's like, it's, it's <laughs> so, dude, it, it, dude, that is so funny. <laughs> It's right? so like, ridiculous. Because like, Imani was on the pa- This isn't even really necessarily about Imani. It's a larger point. He was on the Patreon, and he was saying, like, people who aren't close to the situation shouldn't say anything. And I'm like, but it's a podcast. <laughs> and, it, and it played out. like the Because the, he was responding to the video you had done in response to Savon and Alex about the secret meeting. And you had stuff to say about maybe what Joe has done as far as the narrative and kind of oh, yeah. all that. And I think Imani's point was like you shouldn't say something because if you're close to the situation, you weren't close to the situation. But like that happened in front of everybody. Like the Joe Budden podcast break with Rory and Maul is not some type of secret backdoor meeting. And what yeah, I was gonna say for for <laughs> yeah. one, that was one that played out. 
pretty by pretty i mean literally in public in front of our eyes. so and I, I was gonna say to, to to counter that like you know again rory's a friend of mine so yeah. if there was in some cases there are but not nothing that needs to be more known that would take away from the situation at hand but you know rory tells me things that you know may have happened that weren't expressed or moments like that so yeah i'm i think i'm well within my right to form an opinion on things based on the public information (laughs) very public information and the stuff that i've heard from my friend and obviously i have a bias to to my guys here and i I, regardless bias or not i think you know what was done was kind of shitty but what was done was this, was, come on, bro. <laughs> was, was, look on your YouTube channel. You no, know it was done. I mean, it was, you yeah. just did like a anniversary recap video. <laughs> you see that? You see that? Yeah, I saw that. There's I was no, on the oh. way here. I was like, let's see what Danny's been posting. <laughs> I was like, shit, there was another fallout between them. And it was like, a re- you did like a fucking, th- on this day, 2021. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, this guy's doing like history book shit. <laughs> You know I'm gonna do that about y'all at some point. Uh, sure, <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, I'm 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 ready for it. Yeah. It's 2023. Yeah, I'll do I'll do a VO. <laughs> I'll do a VO for you. Yeah. I'll do a, a guest voiceover. But the thing is, like, your first. Like, I I love when podcasters do this to me. It's like you covered it, but you were there. Like you were, and that's the thing that I'm not gonna allow you guys to do. You guys were also there when everything was happening, and I'm sure Rory was like talking to you about all of this shit. Well, I, no, to be honest. A lot of that stuff, no, there was no, like, the, to your point, the public side of things was all the information I was given. And, wow. yes, I'm friends with Rory, but I think once the, the, the falling out happened, they were so focused on landing mm-hmm. on their f- feet and focusing on the, the next step that there wasn't, like, really time to harp on what just happened. It was like, let's get this you know, let's strike while the iron's hot. Let's figure out what we're doing next. And then that's when my line was tapped. They didn't, like... Rory didn't turn to me and be like, hey, you'll never guess what happened. I saw what happened. Yeah. So it was no, like, let's catch up and get drinks and talk about this shit. It was like, yo, I saw the this is our channel. We need to, uh, how many Instagram accounts can you uh, open on your phone? Like, how many, can you get this Twitter handle? Like, it was more actionable rather than, like, talking about shit that, you know, happened. Okay. Publicly. So there's obviously the recent situation you had, but I wanted to hear about this this is one of my few last questions is you in the response to Savon and Alex said that like you had input on the Carl situation. Yeah, but Rory Moff's spoken about that. Yeah, but I want to know what you think. I don't have any inf- you know what happened. <laughs> no, I don't have no, any don't information know. to add. I know the cameras got but Yeah, it's, that's it. But you had something to say. You were like That yeah. was there's I had nothing else to add. Okay. Carl's great. I love Carl. You still hang out with Carl? I don't like. Well, if he, I'm cool. Like if Carl walked into this room and yeah, that's like my he guy. Did. Carl, yeah. if he, if he swiveled his knees through these cameras, <laughs> yeah. I love Carl. Okay. Uh, Peach, PJ, who does all of our, our graphics, the artwork, He's still all there? Stuff. Peach is still there. Yeah, Peach still works. Uh, does all the YouTube thumbnails, the artwork. Um, he designed the Ram Radio logo. Anything you see visually, okay. Peach, all the photoshopping. Uh, but Peach and Carl are very close. And you know, when I go out with Peach, like whatever the case, like Carl, see, I love Carl. Carl's great. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay, well, I was hoping you would have, like, more... There's, no, there's Carl nothing to the that. cameras. No, and I also, at the time... <laughs> I I know, like, at on the him. time, I wasn't traveling with the guys. Okay. At that time, my role was still just socials. So I, I literally wasn't there for that whole ordeal. Like, I wasn't at the airport. I wasn't even in the studio the next week when shit got revealed. Like, I, I heard about that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, Carl's no longer... I was like, oh, that was news to me. I didn't know that. Wow. It's not juicy. I guess I'll have Sorry. to break this down later. You can cut this part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now's the last part of the question. What do you think about me? Do you have any questions for me? Uh, do I have questions for you? Yeah. Um, no, you, I know I'm, when you wake up every day, I'm at the top of your mind. That's sick. If that ever happened. You've hit rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Trigger warning. I'm <laughs> kill- myself yeah. no uh I, well i don't want to i don't know how much of your personal life you want to indulge i also don't want to make this an interview about you what type of personal life but I like mean. you said you grew up in williamsburg yeah. uh like have you lived anywhere have you been in new york your whole life I, like i've never vacationed anywhere. no not no. vacation but i mean like lived anywhere else no i've grown and uh, i was raised born and raised in williamsburg brooklyn south side to be specific okay are you still there now yes. or are you, okay yes gotcha. i'm still there born and raised so when okay all right all that stuff. Uh, what 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 was your first video that you made that you were like, oh, I have something going here? 
the very first one I did got 12,000 views, which is a lot for the first video. Yeah, that's great. And I was like, wow. It was about the Vulture article Rory and Maul did. Oh, yeah. And it was... <laughs> And then I did a second video that got 57,000 views where I broke down an old episode. It was like, Rory's joke that ended the joke on the <laughs> podcast. I was like, there's a market. And then I got beat in beef with shit. How did you land on that voice, that character? That was something uh, I always love to mimic. Well, Joe's an influence on that because um, I was kind of – big part of that is not wasting people's time. So I feel yeah. like a voice like that – A hook. It, it illustrates like you're trying to entertain at the very least, even if you sound crazy. Yeah. So – that was one thing, and I, I used to watch videos about how to get retention and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, I don't have, like, Rory and Maul and Joe could maybe talk softly to start the video off because there's this bat built up attachment to them, but I'm just some new guy. Dang. Yeah, yeah. And I also think what may have helped me is, is I sounded like Shigs. So people <laughs> people thought I was Shigs. So I think some people were like, oh, this is a new Shigs video. How'd you, how'd you land on the stop? Where did that name come from? The idea was it was like a train stop, and you were like stopping to hang out with me. Mm. Sounds very... <laughs> that's very New York. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. so local. <laughs> it's funny because the first branding of my channel was like the marcy train stop on and the j yeah so that was right in the heart of south williamsburg yeah yeah, yeah. so that was kind of like jmz exactly jmz that should be the name of my my like gossip channel but uh yeah that was kind of the start of the stop i was posting once every other like two weeks and i was like once a two weeks and then it seemed like there was potential for me to go more and then i started doing it more yeah what's your do you have a is it just when moments pop up you create or do you have like a because i've seen you just like fire shit off and i'm like but it's working so yeah. i don't know like is the strategy to just be like the first person in that because obviously there's been i want to call them copycats but like other people that yeah. are stepping into that lane because of what you've built so like are you like well for not for fear i of see like, you jameson Oh man, that kid! <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to J you like Jameson? I you know it's I'm not funny. even trying to shoot at Jameson. I I get he is. You want to talk about a uh, derivative of like a Gen Z in a bottle? <laughs> like that kid is like Axe son. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he he wants to be polarized. He has like such a. I know my voice isn't the best thing in the world, yeah. but he has such like a harsh. And I'm not saying that negatively. I'm just saying it's like such a polarizing tone. Abrasive. Yeah, that it's like I remember when I hopped in Twitter spaces and before I even knew it was Rory and him were arguing. And before I even saw the Avi with like the thing <laughs> like blinking, I was like, that's I know it's sad. Because like I don't know this kid at all, but I know that voice. Yeah. And that is and that's I think there's a and it's to you as well. Like you guys have very distinguishable voices in a space where there's so many voices. That's the thing is that is really Jameson's voice. Are you guys gonna work together in any capacity? Beef. Oh, no, not beef. I, I think <laughs> not, you're, you're like, yeah, we beef it. I think, I think obviously more gets done when you, not even Join like publicly, forces. not even publicly work together. I just think you know maybe if it's like a behind the scenes or I don't know. I think there's room for for that stuff to exist. I would encourage more of that stuff in in podcasting and even in the uh, yeah. you know the commenting about podcasting space as well. Like division mm. only gets you so far. I, I ain't feel. gonna lie, man. I used to create fake beefs with shigs in my head. See? Why? Just because to motivate myself. That's, I mean, sure. And there was sure. a point where I was, I felt getting under shigs' skin because he, he kept calling me a basement dweller. He kept calling That's me. That's pretty funny. I'm <laughs> sure you've had some really colorful nicknames. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Any, when did you reveal, like, your face? Well, I, the Redditors found out who I was long ago. Okay. So they were using it as like a threat against me. Like, we know what you look like. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I'm good. human, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like they had some like crazy uh, yeah, sex I'm not blue. I'm not, I'm, I'm not Skeeter. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm a fucking person, dude. <laughs> I, think, I think the idea was that we're going to reveal like you're some Indian. And I don't think they knew I was like Puerto Rican and Dominican. And okay. <laughs> okay. Like, that's what you're, okay. So that's what you're, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you're kind of ambiguous. We're both ambiguous yeah. bros. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Not biracially ambiguous. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but bisexually rose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was the Redditors found out who I was because the Joe Bunnan fans hate me. Like some of the like hardcore Joe Bunnan. Of course. Fans. So my channel used to be a private, like not private, but like my actual channel before it became the stop. And I had like a playlist of my gotcha. college videos and they found that. Oh, you made like vlogs and shit? No, nah, it was more so like 
not vlogs, like. But your home, face was in it. Home movies, like not home movies, but just I was in college. I was having fun with my friends, and we were filming stuff. Where'd you go to school? Old Westbury. Where is that? Uh, Long Island. Hicksville. Okay, so you're when I say you're New York, you've lived in New York your yeah. whole life. Okay, gotcha. I've gone out of the state. Um, I haven't really traveled overseas too much except for Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Nice. Yeah, but yeah, that's my origins. Yeah. Well, I feel like, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else? What do you think people, I don't know. What do people want to know? I don't have shit to say. <laughs> All right. You're, ba- you're not good at this, man. No, I'm joking. It's not my interview. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> motherfucker. I, know, yeah, I, didn't ask you, I didn't bring you here to interview me. That's right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. This is fun, man. I'm glad we set this up so quickly. Yeah, man. I'm happy you came. I, I feel like it's hard for people to realize that some of the beefs that play out in front of the camera aren't real. And I think people thought you hated me. But no. hey man, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. All right, y'all. Yeah. This is <laughs> Julian. Do you have anything that you want to plug? I don't know. Um, the world will see this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know where to find me. No, yeah. uh, no. I mean, you know, the social. I do a good job. I'm being more active on my personal Instagram of posting a lot of fun BTS content. So if you want to really tap in and, do you have a subscription page? I do. That. Join that. That's fun. It's, it's really just Damaris shaking her ass. Oh. It's fun. I'm okay. trying to like exploit Damaris as much as possible. That's okay. that's Be the careful, goal of my man. page. She's in there though. She sees all the stuff. Be careful. What? Right. What? You don't know. Damaris might switch up on you one day. And be like, oh, you're no. exploiting me. She's great. I love Damaris. She's also gonna start one too. Support Damaris. Um. How oh, much? For, oh, good. You fucking every time you make your videos, you put the worst photo of me in existence. You don't have much photos about you. It's all in black and I, white. Look. What are you talking about? Your look look at my like page. The second photos are in black. All the first photos are. But you understand that. Yeah, I know. You want the one that makes me look zesty. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I think the videos I pick of you, but it's just, I don't, when you're making videos and I have to like click that. No, it's always annoying. the one. It's always this one. Oh, yeah. That's the, I'm only it's talking color. about that photo. It's color. Man, there's. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. You actually look, uh, I, I mean, you look. I guess zesty, I hate that. but photo you also crazy. don't look soft. Like you look like the zesty dude that might be able to throw hands. Thanks. I guess I <laughs> yeah, don't know. So I don't know how to, to take that. Shout out to Jules, man. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. The Stop TV. That's Julian. I'm Danny from the Stop. Peace. Peace.